Hello and welcome. Hope you guys had a good week. This episode, we are going to review tools for animators. And I would like to actually, instead of just do one episode talking about tools for animators, I would like to create a whole new category dedicated to tools for animators. And I'll go through the tools that I use personally right now or will use in the future one by one. I'll give you specifications, I'll give you details on the tool, why I chose to actually work with it, why it's good, why it's bad, and why you perhaps should actually kind of buy it for yourself. So today, as a first episode, we are gonna be reviewing the tablet that I use all the time. You guys have seen me using it before in previous episodes. My first episode with the God of War, I've used it to go over my drawings and, and push my animation. Same thing with the reference video, I've used this tablet. I will tell you all about exactly why perhaps it might be good for you, why I love it, and perhaps if you coming out of uni, it might be a good deal for you. So stick by it, it's gonna be good. Let's review the tablet. So just so you guys know, before I get started, I created a new category on top of this one called interviews. The interview that I did with Mark Jackson on the episode about how to edit motion capture. If you haven't seen it, go see it. I'll leave a link somewhere. It was actually a very long interview and obviously I edited it heavily to make sure that it could fit within the 20 minute video that I wanted to create for you guys. But I have now posted the full interview. I will actually start posting interviews that I will do for episodes for you guys with interesting people from the games industry, from the movie industry, technical people, other animators, people that I admire and I think it will be really interesting for you guys to get to know them better because at the end of the day they are superstars and even though my YouTube channel is not that big I want you guys to know the best people around the business and give you a little insight of what goes on in their minds I think it's very interesting I hope you guys feel the same way let me know in the comments below When you get into a studio, when you get into a place that you need to work, normally they give you a desk and they give you a very basic keyboard, a very basic mouse and a couple of monitors maybe. Depending on the studio, some studios actually have like really nice kits and that's fine, but most studios normally give you something basic so you can work with. What I found is that a lot of people just stay with those tools. It kind of creates a lot of problems, I feel, because normally, ergonomically, those tools are not the best for the person. People obviously don't want to buy their own gear to bring it to work, so they normally buy the gear that they have in order to leave it at home. And that gear normally is the best gear, the gear that you leave at home, but at home, people normally don't create very much. They actually are at work, working eight hours a day, all week, and then they go back home and they don't use the gear that they have at home that was actually intended for them personally, so they don't use it. They use the basic stuff at work. So what I suggest, what I do, is that gear that I have at, uh, at home, I took it to work at some point and I realized that I was so much more comfortable and working so much better and being able to fully create in comfort and just with the tools that I wanted. And basically I invested on myself in order to work eight hours a day the best way possible. I think that's a much better way of looking at things because at the end of the day, you do need to actually work with those tools for a long time. With that said, I'm gonna show you guys some of the tools that I use here at home. And then going forward, as this kind of just develops, I will show you other tools. I'll review other things, help you guys see how I use them from an animation standpoint. I hope it's useful to you guys. If it is useful even just a little bit, then I've done my job. So, without further ado, let's get into this review of the Gaumon tablet. I actually moved from the UK to Sweden and that was maybe two years ago and when I was in the UK I had a really a badass setup at home because I was freelancing for quite a while so I had like a L-shaped table and I had my 
iMac and then on the other side I had a Wacom Cintiq and I was living the life I felt. For a freelance artist, I think that was the perfect setup for me. When I moved to Sweden, I sold all my stuff from the UK to move over here. So when it came time for me to start doing these YouTube videos for you guys, I had to think of a way of getting something similar to what I had in the UK, but could do the same things that the Cintiq actually had. I love the Cintiq, so I had to get the same. I couldn't because I don't have the space here, so did my research and I got to this Gauman. I assumed that perhaps given the price, because it was about 350 pounds, about 400 and something dollars, and I was a bit apprehensive in the beginning, uh, but I started reading some of the reviews both on Amazon, on YouTube, and the tablet started growing on me. Turns out that in some aspects, this tablet is better than the Wacom Cintiq. Let me give you guys some, uh, some specs so you guys can actually kind of uh, see what I mean. So the tablet, the one that I have here, it's called the Gammon PD1560. A bit of a handful of a name, <laughs> but uh, what you need to know is that it's actually quite big. The size of the tablet is actually 15.6 inches. I thought it was gonna be too small because the Cintiq that I had in the UK was about 27 inches, if I'm not wrong. And I was so used to that. It was great, almost better than paper. But this, I feel like I really don't need anything bigger than this in order to make it work. It works really well. It's a nice size to have. Alternatively, you can get the 19 inch, but obviously in my desk, it would not fit. So the screen is actually IPS and is full HD. The resolution is 1920 by 1080. It has 10 shortcut keys and five menu keys. The pen, this pen here, has 8,152 levels of pressure. And that is incredible. It blows away the Cintiq pen that I had, and you can definitely feel it uh, when you draw. What I like about the pen as well is that it feels really good in your hand. Um, it feels much more like a regular pen instead of the, the Cintiq one that normally have a little rubber. I really like the, the, the weight, uh, the balance of the pen is really nice. It's something that I thought it would bother me, the tips. I thought that would actually be perhaps different than the Cintiq and I got used to the Cintiq so much that I wanted exactly the same. And these ones are different, but it feels really good. If they feel a bit more plasticky. The way they actually kind of just slide on the screen is actually really nice. Um, there's no friction. It's a very smooth kind of um, movement when you're drawing. But after you get used to it, it takes you maybe a couple of hours max. I wouldn't for a second think that this is not maybe a Wacom pen. It just feels like a premium pen and it's really well done. I think, uh, I think it's really nice. What I also like is that uh, when you actually recharge it, you have a little uh, hole on the top of the pen. And basically the only thing you need to do is that they give you like a little AC charger, I guess. And you just kind of uh, put it in and you leave it charging like that. What I don't like about it is that you cannot just put it back in the stand and leave it charging which would be great it makes a lot of sense unfortunately the charger actually pulls too much on the pen and you have to end up just putting it away and charging it up uh, the Gammon software is not as intuitive or as uh, slick as the Cintiq but once you set it up once it's actually okay because you don't have to touch it again the only thing you have to use it for is normally to set up the two buttons that you have in your pen and also you have to set up these hotkeys here. So after they are set up, you're good to go. It comes with a protective uh, bag, uh, which is quite neat. Um, it has like a little Velcro that closes really, really well. It has a space with straps right at the, at the hinge of the flap where you can put your pen, which is really cool. And if you don't have the stand on the tablet, you can just grab this tablet because it's small enough that you can just slide it into the protective bag and then take it with you. So when it comes to the stand, uh, here you can see that uh, the back of the stand is actually very simple. Um, there's a little bit of give if you put too much weight on it and uh, it has uh, many levels of adjustment. You can go up quite a lot of levels and down quite a lot of levels and you can pretty much get it upright uh, with the stand which I think is amazing because if you use the tablet as a second monitor like I use it sometimes next to my iMac it comes really handy to have a stand that can just make your monitor completely flat so sometimes I put it here next to the Mac and it serves my, as my second monitor 
when I start streaming, if I get to a thousand, <laughs> this is gonna be my second monitor because it's right here next to the Mac and it's very convenient. So uh, something that I don't like so much about the tablet is that the tablet connects with a, a HDMI cable and a USB Type-C cable. Uh, here you can see all the cables that I actually use. So as you can see here, you have a USB that you connect on the back of the computer. You have a mini HDMI here. You have a USB Type-C. And then this one was supposed to be the HDMI that connects on the back of your computer. But my iMac doesn't have an HDMI, so I had to buy this dongle here that basically converts the HDMI signal to a USB Type-C. So you end up with a huge mess of cables next to your desk, which um, I really dislike because no one likes cables. I hate them with a passion. So yeah, it ends up being a bit messy and it's one of the things that I like the least about the tablet. So you turn it on, on the side, you press the power button after everything is connected, you get greeted with a nice Gaomon logo. And after that, you should automatically see your second screen. I highly recommend you downloading the drivers as soon as you actually get it. Here for you guys, I'm actually kind of testing a little bit of the different pressure levels that you can find. I mean, 8,000 levels, it feels like it's way too many and you probably will never use them all, but believe me, the more levels of pressure, the better it is. This is what I've learned with this tablet. So it's really, really cool. You might see that sometimes um, you actually kind of lose a little bit of that sensitivity on the pen. I think that's something that I have noticed all the time with this tablet. It's not bad so it distracts you from your work you can still work with no problems but i feel like either i have to update my drivers once again or sometimes it just loses the connection real quick um there was one time that i thought it was really bad but that was because i didn't charge my pen and i should have so after i charged my pen everything was fine and there's always a little constant it's very difficult for you to notice until you use it all the time I think it's one of those things that will make you think twice about getting a Wacom when you can actually get something like this. I mean, I love Wacom with a passion and in due time I'll replace this with a Wacom Cintiq because, I mean, there's really nothing better out there in the market. But if you cannot afford it, then this is an amazing alternative that you can get at a really affordable price. You can see how easy it is to actually draw. The lines come out really smooth. It just feels like you actually, when you get in the flow, it's really nice. Once you work with it for a few hours, I think maybe three or four hours, sometimes the tablet uh, kind of just heats up a little bit. Nothing really noticeable, but you can feel that it becomes a little bit warmer. The tips of the pen uh, last for a very long time, I feel, and they were generous enough to give you eight of these. Unfortunately, they don't really give you different types of tips just like Wacom, so you can have a different type of feel. What they do give you is this anti-glare screen that you can put on top, and uh, it's really, really cool to actually take reflections away. I didn't really use it very much, I took it off, and I just used it like this, and I think the friction that they have in the screen is really, really good. I really like it. It's akin to working in an iPad if you had a plastic tip instead of a rubber tip. I think the Gaumon is an amazing tablet for the price that it has. I never thought that I was going to get a tablet other than Wacom. And I also never thought that tablets, that display tablets, could actually get as cheap as 400 pounds. And this means that the market is now open to a much more affordable solution that anyone can have a, a display tablet. And display tablets, at least for me, are so much better than the tablets that you have here and you draw over there, you know? This, the, tablets with a USB that are really really cheap. For me those ones uh, it was always confusing I could never draw with them because I was drawing over here but I'm actually seeing it over there. It always felt off. So display tablets were always the way for me to go digital and to learn how to actually kind of go with it. So for an animator this is super valuable. A tablet just opens up a brand new world to you. Um, I know many animators that actually uh, animate with a tablet. Also, a lot of animators actually kind of uh, go uh, into uh, a tablet in order to actually get their reference ready, like myself. And also, it's very versatile because then you can perhaps get into drawing as well. And as I've been saying here pretty much in every episode, you should get drawing and you should be better at drawing if you're not at the moment. On top of having a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard, I think the next thing you should get is definitely a tablet. 
so it can help you out to take it to the next level, so you can start filling things up. It's an entry point to a lot of people to actually start drawing more, start visualizing things more. To me, this Gaumann tablet has been really good. I cannot say enough good things about it. There's a few little niggle things that I really don't like, but overall, love it, especially given the price. I'll continue using it for the foreseeable future, and then, if I stop using it and I get something else, you guys will know it first. So, full disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Gaumann in any ways. I bought this with my hard-earned cash and I'm just happy I did it and I can show it to you guys here in this channel and um, I hope it helps some of you in getting a good tablet for a relatively cheap price. I hope you guys didn't mind me straying away from the usual episode sequence by introducing this new series. I really think that these tools will help you guys with your animations, with your workflow especially. Oh, I need to draw over something. So you kind of just pull this, draw a little bit, move it aside, continue animating. It's awesome. It feels really good. It feels fluid. I hope you guys get to experience that at some point. If you guys want to purchase this, I'll leave a link below. Let me know if you do, what do you think? Also, let me know what you think about this episode and what you think about this new format of just the review thing. Next week will definitely be animation, you can count on it, it's gonna be something good, I have a feeling. <laughs> As always, thank you guys for the support, thank you very much for sticking by, thanks for the comments, for the likes, for the subscriptions, really cool. I am now at 960 subscribers, which is pretty amazing, so I hope I get to that 1000 subscribers. Because if I do, as I mentioned last time, I will start live streaming stuff. I cannot wait to get in contact with you guys and start chatting live while I work. I think uh, working alone can be a little bit um, daunting sometimes because you're just here thinking hopefully people will like it. So the fact that I can actually work and talk with you guys and just kind of uh, have a feedback straight away. What do you guys think about this? This is really cool, whatever. That will be amazing, so I cannot wait for that. So let's get to that 1,000 subscribers, guys. Spread the word if you actually feel like it. And that's a wrap for the episode. So, until next time, stay well, stay safe. Peace!